Greetings and greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back again in this podcast. I sometimes have a question uh, or I am questioning myself sometimes to call it a podcast just because this expression has been commercialized in a very excessive way that most of the videos and most of YouTubers nowadays use the word podcast to refer to something that is relevant to a longer, relatively longer video chat about a particular topic, whether they address something that is relevant to sports or world news or some self-development recommendations or talking or addressing some advances that people achieve in terms of their entrepreneurship or career or one of the novelties of technology that we commonly see in news. And uh, I just want to swing by, as we say in English, to swing by is to visit quickly or to just come over for a short period of time to address some of the key points about English learning, about grammar, about vocabulary, about listening, about watching or viewing or learning something and rediscover and re-question the mechanism and strategies and the protocols that we follow as a self-discipline to improve your ability to um, speak English and improve your ability to deliver uh, a better message to people to understand you better and to be able to communicate and socialize with people to a larger extent. And in order to do that, um, I keep tapping on some of my observation because, I mean, I wouldn't um, say that you get most of your experience from reading, but I personally like to do field work. And most of my observations come from field work, working with students and learners and trying to discover and rediscover their ways and paths with learning language and how they improve themselves to a larger extent. And building on that, trying to develop a hierarchy where they can improve certain aspects of their learning and become much better um, English learners. Because these kind of replicable models can be generalized and overgeneralized to a larger extent on a bigger community of learners of English. So in order to achieve that, I jot down a few uh, comments and a few notes about things that learners often uh, struggle with. And I try my best actually to make it a habit of doing that on a weekly basis because we you know developing a plan to edit a video, to shoot a video, to document this kind of observation is cumbersome and it's uh, full of um, challenges, including the challenges of trying to categorize these problems because they are scattered on the uh, topography of language. I like to use the word topography. Um, I don't know if you're going to notice this, um, but these are some of the common notes. I don't know if the autofocus of the camera is going to get it right and to nail it, um, but... These are some of the common notes that I take about my students and how they learn English and how they improve their learning practices of this beautiful language over the uh, training course that I provide them. So yesterday I had a student and we were talking for an hour and a half to almost two hours, an hour and 40-ish minutes. And during this conversation, I try to emphasize minimally uh, the issues of grammar because that is going to uh, give her less restriction when she speaks. So she's going to be less conscious about her grammar issues. I would say grammar shaming. Do We, we do have some body shaming issues nowadays. Um, it's a popular expression. And also we have grammar shaming where teachers try to stigmatize some students because they have this recurring grammar issue like dropping S's of third person singular or not perfecting the way they conjugate the past 
perfect or the past participle of some of the verbs. And we are all actually um, fall in this uh, dilemma because sometimes we um, come across a verb that is kind of congenitally malformed to an extent that it just witnessed over the career of this verb and its use in society. It just witnessed so many transformations to its uh, derivation or inflection that it just makes it really impossible to uh, decide uh, the ultimate form of it in the past participle or present perfect. So what I want to say in this uh, podcast or in this short, well, I don't think it's short. It's going to be like six or seven minutes um, video is the fact that there are very pretty much recurring issues when it comes to grammar. Any beginner of language can focus on them and just marginalize other aspects. Perfecting them is going to give you an upper hand in language learning process. And one of them is the um, uh, word choice. Now, word choice in English is really uh, problematic because whatever you translate subconsciously or deep in your brain, phonetic to English might not apply to how it should look like or how it looks like in English. So keeping keeping your eye on the way we say things in English is really important because no matter how much you try to just uh, say something or perfecting something in English is not going to get you 100% score in terms of like accuracy, um, especially when it comes to using examples, pun, uh, puns or metaphor or simile or when uh, we use idiomatic expressions or phrasal verbs. These are different categories of language that demand higher level of uh, awareness and higher level of practice and higher level of reading to be able to reach that uh, professional level of use. And um, <clears throat> second is false friends, or I don't know what they, they have different <clears throat> nomenclature, uh, similar meaning, like teaching and learning, selling and buying, and purchasing. I often come across students who would say, for example, I learned him a lesson instead of saying I taught him a lesson or um, yesterday during our discussion with that student she kept saying um, there was this shop that buys cats and I don't want to interrupt in Karen and say do you mean as an indirect way of feedback do you mean they're selling cats and then she finally realized that there was this kind of problematic use of verb and then uh, she started to change it, and that just worked out quite well. So the point that I want to make here, you should be able to uh, build your learning on these kind of fine things in language, and these are minor things that once you perfect them, you start to get closer to becoming a professional English speaker, not a native English speaker, but a professional English speaker. I'm also reading from the notes that I've taken here, uh, the emphasis on the present perfect. Well, to some extent, I would I would say it's not like top, top notch thing that you should focus on, but it's something that you should be aware of, like how to use present perfect in English. Like I've been here and I was here. To some extent, like if you ask a native speaker what is the difference between present perfect and present simple, they wouldn't be able to tell you 100% accuracy what they are and how they are different. So that's something that just you have to keep in mind when once you start learning. Just need to be aware, not necessarily using it. It's very important. Watching tutorials and listening to actively to pronunciation and repeating uh, some of the uh, problematic uh, words in English when it comes to pronunciation is going to give you an upper hand in language, especially those phonemes or sounds that are not there in Arabic. Like one of the examples here, I'm not sure if it is available in Arabic or not, but it's ah, like can. 
I can come. Now, once you have it separate like can, it changes the way um, when it's blended in a sentence like I can come because the 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 main verb takes the superiority of pronunciation here. So that's very important. Uh, has and have, like I have, he has, and she has, and they have. There's this sudden switching between has and have that a lot of native speakers have no issue with because they acquired language, but non-native speakers have a big trouble actually with once they start learning this beautiful language. So it takes a little bit of time to practice it, to perfect it. And um, I would say finally, um, focus more on um, reviewing present simple, past simple, and present perfect, and present continuous. These are major important tenses in English, tenses and aspects in English that you should be aware of. Watch videos, watch a ton of videos about. Try to see how they use them. Watch videos on YouTube um, and try to see how they use these kind of sentences and blending this kind of tense differences, present perfect and present simple, um, and present continuous and past continuous. They are very important for you to be able to become a better English learner. And of course, a speaker eventually, because this is ultimately your goal of learning languages to become a professional English speaker and be impressive um, to people. And just remember something, since we are talking about impressiveness here, that the ultimate goal of language is to make people understand, to have people understand your message, what you're thinking of. The words are slaves to thoughts. This is, a, this is something that I keep saying as a statement, words are slaves to thoughts. And you can choose any word like a doe to refer to your meaning that you're trying to, to transfer to people. So keeping that in mind is um, a very important objective for you to let people understand, not to impress people and show off that you have good grasp of English, but to make people understand you then once you're talking with your professors on campus and you try to impress them that you have this amount of words that you know, probably delivering a speech in Harvard or Massachusetts Institute of Technology, this is where people, elite, um, intelligent people, will definitely understand what you're saying. But for general public purposes, I would say just keep it simple on your default setting of language and use the most common words to make people understand you. And that's it about our podcast for this morning or this evening, depending on where you are watching us, please share and subscribe this video if you find it useful because I spend a lot of time editing and making sure that you understand the message. And this is building on my cumulative experience of teaching students, hundreds of them, and learning about their path and ways of learning language and how they can uh, make it better. So building on this observation, you can take uh, this lesson and make, uh, make it um, like a role model guideline for you to learn language and speak it better. Have a wonderful night or a wonderful morning.